Good morning, everyone. Happy uh, happy moving day. I got a nice, uh, nice hairdo going on here. So uh, yeah, today's moving day. I'm going to be moving my warehouse to, uh, to here. Moving. Bringing all my stuff here. Leaving it on pallets until the space is more ready uh, for me to set up in it. So I have a uh, 20, I think it's a 26 foot uh, dock height box truck that I'm renting today. So we're going to head over there, pick up that truck go to the warehouse and start loading up. Uh, Donovan's helped me today. He's already there getting things staged by the dock and getting things kind of ready to go. And uh, if you saw my shop move, it's gonna be pretty similar to that because it's the same exact truck, except going onto the truck, it's from a loading dock, not from ground level. And then we'll come back here, unload, and uh, all of that. We should have two box truck loads and then uh, one load here on the, the trailer, so. This is going to be a hectic day, so wish me luck. We'll see if I'm happy by the end of the day. That should be the truck. Right there. All right, got the truck. Time to keep driving. <laughs> this thing takes some getting used to. The brakes are very touchy. Okay, we're here. And driving one of these things definitely takes some uh, some getting used to. This is the same length as my truck and trailer, but there's no pivot, so it's a little different. You got a very different turning radius. That that's for sure. Uh, let's see if the dock is open. The dock is open. I have never docked a truck before, so we'll see. Uh, we will see how that goes. so good just gotta follow the lines back although I can't really see that well because the sun uh, eventually we'll hit the dock right there okay let's see how I did Ugh. I'm in there this guy's here Someone's been busy. We got the chair kit inventory, the last of it onto uh, the truck. So style four cherry, and I got some extra pieces of style four walnut. My remaining uh, pallet of boxes for shipping. Those will go underneath the flattening table. So we're gonna try and fly this thing in here. You're kind of crooked. Can you side shift that way? That way. There you go. You got to kind of hook in this way a little more. That end's got to come Bad. that way. You're crooked. You're good. Keep going. Keep coming. Okay. Keep going. You're good. Still good. Turn. Okay, you're coming. Okay, you're good. Lift. Okay. Turn. Turn. More turn. You got like four feet. Good yeah, you're so you're super good. You got uh, like two feet left. Keep coming. Uh, like six inches. Uh, I think that's where it's gonna be. You know, aside from like I feel the truck like pitching up, moving. pitching up. Yep, I got. I'm fully on the truck. truck. Yeah, I can I can feel it when you came on. You shift this way here. Other, other this way. That's good. Come on straight in. The trailer goes up. The truck goes up.
A little higher. Okay, you drive in, you'll feel it hit. Gun it? Yeah, gun it, yes. Definitely gun it. Please gun it. <laughs> I never know if you're serious. Just gun it. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. That's why I need more stress in my life. Thank you. Right around there. I'm gonna put it against it. You are. We're gonna hit the slap table first. Oh. That's all. Okay, that's the uh, the first load. So uh, I think we're gonna be okay. We should have enough room for everything. So. Uh, Time to drive over the house and uh, unload. So tomorrow we're going to be back here with the lift installing all of the uh, last bits of truss bracing in here. So I'm not, I'm probably going to end up leaving a lot of stuff outside and we'll just tarp things so they don't get any dew on them. We don't have any rain in the forecast. So I'm not super worried about that. So I think a lot of this is going to be kind of set out here. And my biggest priority right now is just getting this truck unloaded so we can get back and load it again. It's all in there still, so that's a good sign. So here's a little something I didn't quite think about. Uh, I'm not gonna have enough height <laughs> to get my forks underneath the table and lift because the uh, this little jiggy thing here adds like seven feet. So we're gonna have we'll, we'll have to block up the forks to get the forks lower for the pick point. So that'd be I got a plan, but it's gonna be inconvenient. Not a problem. Well, maybe it'll be a problem. We'll see. We'll see. We got here. Don't be damaged. Everything's all screwed up. Okay, you ready for our first problem to solve? What's that? I, we can't pick the machine from under the rails because this thing is too tall. The map. Come out of my mouth. Yeah, don't worry about it on the rail. <laughs> How's a talent handler? Yeah. How hard could it be? That corner's off the ground. I don't think there's much pressure on it. Okay, good. Just drag it out.
Yeah, that's the limit right there. You get to enjoy the, the views and flatten all your slabs all day long in the, in the beautiful countryside. No, just no. no. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to do it. Time check, it's 1.30. Back to the truck rental. Donovan's gonna drive the uh, truck and trailer in to the city and I'll take the box truck and then we'll fill both of them up and go all the way back to the barn. Look. All right, time check, 2.08. How, fa how fast can we get out of here? <laughs> that look. Getting out of here was easy last time. All right, we're gonna get the compressor and dryer out of here first. Oh yeah, do that some more. You like that sound? Oh, it's, it's, that's music to my ears, or something. I packed it in real nice. Oh, you're good, you're just low lift. Yeah, you know, keep going up. Now back up. Keep keep backing. Okay, you're clear. Except for whatever those pallets may be over there. Yep. You turn the left. Keep coming. One inch. There you go. You're all the way into the wall. Then I back up. Yep. Look back. We'll go out the dock because they got they got so much stuff over there. So I'll pull it out the way I brought it in. Just set it down when the truck's done. We'll pick it up last. Uh, tip down, tip tip down. There you go. Who put that there?
Oh yeah. Oh, 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 there's a the post is there. There's a post right there. There's a sign. 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 There's a Donovan helped me set them up, so he's helped me take them down. <laughs> Back in the day, when I first got this space, Donovan was here helping. Okay, on to the thing I'm dreading the most. Getting this thing out of here. You go and you got a foot still. All right, 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 hang on. That's good, right there. I'll back up as soon as it gets all loaded. Take me two minutes to fill it, finish it up. Ready for the ride of your life? This doesn't bother me. Eh, okay. The pot hold the end. You're uh, good. You're clear. Made it in. Set it. Okay, tip. Up. Tip down. Okay, come back. All right. Up again. All right, tip back to you. Keep tipping, keep tipping. Okay, come forward. There you go. Let's get some squat now. 
Okay, that's it. Just about all gone. I have one more trip to come back and get my forklift and a few other things to get my little signs down. But uh, that's all that's left. Just a few things. Pretty out. Pretty. It's getting pretty dark here real quick. All right, we're gonna at least try and get the wood out of here. And I should be able to just pull everything else out in the morning. When it's light out and I can see what I'm doing. Because that can destroy that in an instant. All right, we're getting there. Okay, last thing is the dryer. Yay! Almost done. It's an empty box truck. We'll deal with that bandsaw tomorrow. The There's a truck back there somewhere. Yeah, I see your truck. I just don't know what's going back here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I think it was a fairly successful move day. I'm just getting ready to take this truck back this morning, but uh, there's our, our field of stuff. And uh, I'll get back there probably later this week sometime and uh move the forklift here and all the remaining stuff and this will be uh completely done so it was uh, just as hectic as i thought it was going to be so there was a few things i was going to mention that i didn't uh, have a chance to so first off i just want to say thank you to everyone who left comments on the video about uh the move and the why and the pros and cons and everything i thought there's a lot of really great comments and there's a, little, a lot of really great discussion so what I was hoping to do with that video is help out anyone that may be in a similar situation or is maybe going to be in a similar situation at some point, you know, in their life. And there was a lot of good comments and things for uh, people to consider. So thank you all for all that. And as always, thank you for all the support of uh, the comments as well, because that, uh, <laughs> that, that helps in times like these. So as far as the space goes, there's one thing I forgot to mention yesterday at the warehouse, and that was... Uh, uh, ceiling height. So at the the warehouse, the warehouse space that I'm used to has a clear height from the floor to the bottom of the trusses of 20 feet. 
And so I'm, hopefully it kind of makes sense now with the open truss design that I kind of have, I don't have quite the flexibility of that space with that much head height, but I do have something kind of similar. So my racking can extend up into the trusses and I get some more essentially ceiling height past my actual head height by having those trusses open. So my, my pallet racks are 12 feet, so they're right there. So things on the top shelf can go up into the truss a little bit, or if I want to do taller racks, I can put them in here like this. And because my trusses are nine foot uh, apart, I can have a four foot rack going all the way up into the truss and my mast can come up into the truss bay as well. And I still have a foot of clearance before I get into the truss on this side. So I can, I can go high in here if I need to, or if I want to. And, uh, and all of that. So I'm gonna get this thing out of here. This has got to come off of the, the trailer too at some point, but uh, I'm not in a particular rush for that. Time to get this truck back. Which Let's clean up the box and take it back. Yeah, that's it. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, trailer unloaded because uh, I need my trailer because I gotta haul some wood tomorrow. So we'll get this thing down. And I think I, I haven't shown the saw, like even when I moved it it's like over two years ago, didn't really show a whole lot about it. So I think maybe I'll just kind of run through and uh, show you what kind of shape it's in and what, what sort of thing you're gonna see at some point uh, now that I have this thing somewhere where I can sort of work on it. So in the video where I picked this thing up and brought it to the warehouse, I did do a quick little walk around, but I didn't do a whole lot of detail on it, mostly because I hadn't spent any time with it, looking at it. And uh, that's still kind of the case. I haven't done anything with it, except look at it since then. <laughs> so this is a 40-inch uh, a bandsaw. It's a Tanowitz, I think it was the RH, is the, uh, the model number. So it has 40-inch wheels. And uh, because of that, that puts the table height really, really high. So the way that they uh, compensate for that is they have the saw set up so that the, the bottom wheel is supposed to go down into the floor. Uh, I'm not gonna cut a trench for a bandsaw in my floor, so I'll leave it up on some kind of, I'll make some actual, an actual base for it at some point, probably with fork pockets, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of a higher working height. But if you're doing scroll work, at least for me, I'm not that tall. This is like perfect height for doing scroll work. Um, but the other thing I'll probably end up using this for is resawing. And I'll be with like a power feeder. So I'm not, the table height doesn't really matter for that so much. It does have a seven and a half horsepower. This is a three phase motor on here. Uh, that is a direct drive. So it drives the, uh, the lower wheel uh, directly. You got... Uh, rack and pinion table adjustment thingamabobber back here. Okay, so there is the uh, the upper wheel. So 
I didn't talk about it before, but the things that I know that are bad about this, I haven't plugged it in. I'm assuming it runs. There's nothing, there's not a whole lot of complexity there. Assuming the motor actually works, which it should. So the bad things, the upper wheel needs a new tire. You can see this like giant groove that's been cut into it. I have the, the guard cover pieces off but there is an interior piece in here that guards the blade on this side and that was jammed up into the tire and that uh, created this huge dish and ate all this material out of there. So this upper wheel will need a new tire. The other sort of bad thing that I'm noticing or I've been noticing is the tables are a little tweaked. So you can see the alignment pinhole. That's, see how off center it is or offset it is. So there is a step here is this side of the table is high, this is low. So that would uh, need to be tweaked. Uh, maybe just putting the pin back in would be enough to force it into, you know, flat or whatever, but I may need to have the table uh, resurfaced. I could take the tabletop to the machine shop and they could uh, flatten it and redo it for me. We will see, I don't know. This has been a project on the to-do list for a long time. It will probably stay that way for some more time. <laughs> I have, Plenty of other things to do. There it is. It'll go back into storage <laughs> for uh, a little bit longer. All right, let's go get the forklift. On the trailer! Yeah. Yay! This back, thank you. I always, I always wanted this sheet of OSB. It's like fifty dollars. Oh, it was unfortunately. I'm done moving. That's it, never never again and no more. So yesterday, Davin and I got everything moved into the building. So everything is kind of staged back in here. So you'll see the next uh, barn video. We are currently doing insulation. So as they finish up this back area, we're just kind of following them out and uh, just kind of stacking things in here. Um, everything will stay just kind of like this all in here until um, the floor is sealed and then we'll move everything out for the, uh, the ceiling, but at least everything is here and, uh, I'm done moving, which is, uh, super nice. So this brings me to one kind of pro for me of this space versus my previous warehouse space. And that is all of this space out here. So at the, uh, at the warehouse space, that area was like, it was kind of back. Uh, it was well, like a hundred something feet back from the dock door. Everything has to come down a six foot aisle. And then anything that comes in and out of the building has to come out a dock door, which is uh, nine feet wide. Or I can turn and go through the building and go out the, uh, the ground level access. 
but the door into the rest of the building is only eight feet wide. So practically speaking, you're not going to be able to like take things in and out very easily. Like once things are in there, you don't want to pull them out. But that's the advantage of this space now is that if I want to, if I need some more space in there, I can move things out of the way. I can, I can set things outside temporarily and then put them away real quick at the end of the day if the weather is fine. So I actually have a little more space in a, in a sense because I have more, more flexibility here. And another question I got on the last video was what's the size comparison between this barn and my warehouse space? Uh, by the time you add in you know, the, the thickness of the walls, you're gonna lose the total space is a little under 39 by 71. And that's um, about 100-ish square feet more than my warehouse space. If I include the aisle space, that would have been right about here. That's where that six foot aisle would have been. So this is just a little bit bigger than what I've had for the past uh, two years. And then lastly, I'm sure someone's gonna ask me, well, wouldn't it make more sense to wait to move? And in a perfect world, sure. But uh, this has been weighing on me for so long that I am so happy to be done with this step. Everything is here. I don't have to move anything like transport wise down a road. It's, it's all taken care of. I can check that off the list and I'm finally done worrying about or thinking about that. It's like a visual indicator that this is moving forward and I'm making actual progress towards having this be an actual functional space. So I'm super happy that uh, I'm done with it. And uh, shuffling things around is not, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's not a big deal. Everything will stay on those, those pallets until the floor is sealed. And then I'll start actually setting things up, putting the pallet racks up, getting things organized, and then um, getting like the chair kit packing area put back together, bring the inventory back out here and just kind of get the business kind of operating again and uh, all of that. So that is, uh, that's the move. That's over. So happy. <laughs> uh, the next thing with this you'll see is the, uh, the barn thing. We'll have the insulation and the, uh, the boiler install in that next video. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the move, I'm sure you do. Please feel free to leave me a comment. Tell me all the things I did wrong. <laughs> I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.